Then, if you don't uh, follow sports, perhaps you have heard of our first guest. Ladies and gentlemen, here's Marv Albert. Marv. Welcome to the show. So, uh, thank you. Dave, anything, uh, anything new with you these days? <laughs> you know, Marv, um, when we first heard about the trouble or the situation, I've seen you on other shows, and you refer to it as the situation. So I'll, I'll use that word as well, the situation. <laughs> um, I decided, well, here's a man that I've known for a long time, 16 years, I think. Been on the show a hundred times you've been on the show. And by the way, apparently in all those visits, we were talking about the wrong kind of stuff. Yes. But that's another... <clears throat> I, uh... That's another story. I, I, I heard that line last night, and I've got the same kind of reaction, yes. But I decided, well, because it's a friend of ours, and the man is in trouble. It seemed like he perhaps is in, you know, great trouble. I decided I would stop, you know, doing jokes, or not do jokes about the, the, the situation at all. And... Uh, I want to tell you, Marv, as, as you probably know in this business, jokes are hard to come by. <laughs> and many nights I felt like a farmer at harvest time, standing by the field watching the crops rot. So the feeling, the feeling is you want to unload and get it all out tonight, no, no, is that just, it? Oh, I, just, oh, I see. This uh -huh. was one of many emotions uh, I struggled yeah. no, with during, you, during the situation. I have to say, you and, and, and the staff have been just so, uh, so great to me uh, right throughout this. And I, you know, we talked... Uh, while the situation right. was uh, was going on, and uh, I, I mean, I really appreciate the way you uh, handle things. Thank so, you. It was just an you. act to try and get you back here. I know. Um, <laughs> all right, let's go. Let's hear it. Let's get right to it. Let's hear it. What do we have to say here? Well, I didn't bring any wild and wacky with me. I should... <laughs> no bloopers? Are no, you kidding no, me? No, no, I had a different oh, version of wild. <laughs> Did you wild see that high wacky. school play earlier, Marv? The barking dog play? Unbelievable. Whoa, that was I, something. What as, is... as I was watching that, I had withdrawal. <laughs> I, should, I should point out. But, uh, well, it's been a nightmare. Yeah. Well, you know, what else is there to say uh, about it? And uh, it's uh, been a horrible experience going through this, and particularly for my family, the kids. And uh, What have we learned here? Have we learned yeah. anything? What have we learned? What can we all learn? Well, I went through the details of this on Larry King last night on Barbara Walters. Right. I'm sure you don't want to be right. bored with uh, the case. Well, but they I ain't feel here, Marv. That's for true. me. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was a sincere laugh on my part. Well, the good. first one in many months. Well, good. Uh, uh, I, should, I should point out. Yeah, but, you should have a seat in the audience then, yeah. too. Uh, uh, well, I'll tell you what. Well, and no, and I, you have to understand, my perspective yeah. is different, I think, from, from a lot of people, because I, I felt that you and I are friends, and, and the, the show, we've been friends and so forth. So I'm looking at this, and I'm thinking, we don't want Marv to be guilty. We want Marv to be innocent. We don't want Marv biting women. We don't want this woman to be injured. We don't, we don't want any part of this, really. So then, as things unfold, right. and you in court say that you are guilty, then we go, oh, no, what, what does this well, mean? Well, the situation was that uh, I, I, I was set up. I, I feel it was extortion on the, on the part of uh, the woman who I had a consensual relationship with for 10 years. Uh, we could not get our evidence in. Uh, there were all kinds of very complicated rape shield laws right. in, in the state of Virginia. We talked about and, this and, while and, it was going well, there on. there should be. And we think that this is an excellent piece of legislation. And, and it's designed it is. to protect if, innocent people. If it, if it is used correctly, but the interpretation was expanded where uh, this particular person uh, had other extortion scams which have since come out and uh, when there were breakups with men in particular in her life uh, other th crazy things like that uh, would would occur and she had been just told that I was about to get engaged and I th think it was her last crack at right. it. In fact a former boyfriend came out, there's a big story in the New York papers uh, last week and said that she had planned to extort me five years ago. She was going to get money uh, out of me. So it's a combination of we could not get the interpretation of these extortion situations, plus uh, they were able to bring anybody in they mm -hmm. wanted. So I'm standing there, you're looking at five years to life, right. as opposed to, uh, and I think the judge saw it from a common sense point of view, and you know, after conferring with, with my attorney, Roy Black, we're looking at a misdemeanor uh, going from five years to life to one year probation, 
and, and you're out of there. You like you it's like you're choice. in Siberia. I mean, how, how can you even have a choice? No, a, but you know what it looks like on this side of things. Because, absolutely. Because now, now you, in, in court you said, okay, I'm guilty, and now you're saying you're innocent, so we think, all right, we have a choice. Which, which Marv do we believe here? And, moreover, what we wanted you to do, right. what we hoped you could do, is just stay in there and, and fight it out and, and prevail. But and, you take and I a thought, chance. Well, I know there's a huge chance, chance, but early on, if you're standing there, early on, there was a piece of evidence that you were able to use that made it seem like this thing there is over. Right. There was a, uh, it a looked cab like driver, you had a pretty good chance. A cab driver came forth and had uh, uh, actually uh, said that uh, there were several scams, including that she went to him uh, and uh, actually was offering a bribe, right. $50,000 in a car, so if he would say something. Well, the thing is, uh, Dave, with accepting the misdemeanor, I, according to her testimony, and it was consensual, she had asked me, these were hickeys we're talking about. Uh. <laughs> she asked me. I just, I just never were, in my wildest dreams thought I'd hear Marv Albert say hickeys. hickeys. <laughs> there was just, another, I'm sorry. you're right. That's a good point. That's well put. Well put, no question. And I said, according to her testimony, if she felt that she was harmed by this, yes, I'm right. guilty. I, I, you know, there's no right. question about that. That's what the guilty all right. well, plea help was, me out with this was one all more, about. One, one more time. I never thought I would say hickeys either way. Yeah. You think about it, Could, right. Did you ever entertain the idea of getting on the stand yourself and saying, well, this, is, this is not true, and this is not true, but and I, we can prove it, and we have this tape? Right. I mean, honest to God, Marv, two days into this, I thought, you know, uncork the champagne. It looks like he really was set up. It's well, all over. In other, in other states, it might have been all over, yeah. but it wasn't accepted that it should have been all but over in this particular you have told state. But could you got on stand and told your story? It could not reach that point if they could in, instead bring in anybody who could fabricate stories. In other words, they were, their witnesses were being allowed in. As we saw, a second witness came in. That was complete fabrication. Right. So what shot would I have? Uh, you know, you're looking at five to life, no, taking understand. a chance, even I though understand. many but of the jurors came out and said they would have acquitted me. Mm -hmm. uh, five of them right. uh, at least came out. But, you know, that's halfway through a trial. Yeah. And that doesn't necessarily mean they would, you know, say the same thing at, at the end of the trial. But, but you know what you're saying, and I suppose it's possible to, be, to say this and also be completely innocent, but you know what you're saying is stereotypically what men respond with when they're accused of some sort no of question. wrongdoing toward women. No question. It, it's, it's just like textbook. And, and what happens is also, well, I, I've, never, I've never been in trouble in my life. Never. And then you look back at the, the, the woman who made the charge. I mean, it seemed a little strange. You had series after series of events where there would be either similar or other extortion or other scam situations. Now, wouldn't you think yeah. they would look into it? Why didn't the police come to my room right after this alleged incident? Did I mean, it, why was she collecting evidence? Uh, taping phone I know. calls I mean, it, it over sounds, the years. It sounds right? great now, but I'm well, just saying... Well, it was good then in court, too, yeah, we thought. But, but, I mean, how many times have you seen the Knicks come back, you know, and, and, and win yeah. in overtime, you know? Just fighting and fighting and fighting, and, that, and, and I'll just say that... You don't you know, have thought of it in that matter. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, why would that occur to you? But, yeah. uh, <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? As a friend, I just thought, oh, my God, Marv, come on, get, get in there and, and beat this down and prove to me and to everybody else right. absolutely From innocent. afar, it's very easy well, to take know, that point of view uh, from an emotional uh, sense, but if you're standing there and you're thinking you're not getting what you are supposed to be able to get in and they are getting whatever they want to get in, yeah. you have no choice. I'm, I'm thinking of five years to life. And, and that, that was what the choice was. Yeah. I mean, you look at, you know, the, uh, not, not to compare the issue at all, but uh, what happened in, in the nanny case, and of course that was reversed, you just don't know what a jury will do. You know, uh, when this happened, I thought to myself, uh, and by the way, how much, and you know, you don't have to answer any of this, of course, how, how much of what we now know about your sex life or alleged sex life is, is true, is close? I mean, is it all... <laughs> Is any of it true? I mean, even if there's a little bit of it true, man, wow. You've covered it. <laughs> the audience really went for that one. Well, yeah. you, you, you covered every possible aspect of that question, didn't you, Dave? <laughs> every possible aspect. Can I ask you details about your sex life well, on no, national television? No, no, Why not? I'll tell you, I'll tell you, okay, I'll tell you one thing. I'll tell you one thing. The only thing, the only thing I have ever bitten during sex mm. is my lower lip. <laughs> um. 
As I have said, I went through a curious stage at one, at one point. <laughs> I knew that would. It's now, always nice with a live audience reacting to these things. No, but, but no, 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 wait a minute. And, and, I, uh, and I want but, you to understand. I, I feel comfortable with you asking yeah. you these things because this is. I've had all, you know three months to think about all of this stuff. And and you stored it all up. No, get, no. Yeah. But I mean, just the way anybody, a friend of yours, would would be concerned and get a million questions. And the, the nature of this thing, every day there were more questions and fewer answers. I mean, you understand the way the media but works. Much and of that's it how it turns was, out. Was tabloid reports and what happens once something is written and anybody, as you know can come out and say things, uh, and, and it just got to be uh, to a point where, I mean, people are either going to believe or not believe, right. and you just, you can't react to every, every story that comes out, and once something is said, it just repeats itself. Yeah. I mean, I think you've been in that situation. I, I know how, yes, once it surfaces, it's on your permanent record, whether it's true or not, you know, I mean, that's what you're up against, that's what we're all up against. Right. Um, but, I mean, uh, transvestites? Do you, do you, know, you know transvestites? I, during a period of my life, I did meet a transvestite. Now, that doesn't necessarily now see, mean... I, yeah. I've known you for 16 years. Yeah. Never once did you say to me, Dave, guess who I met last night? <laughs> just, it's, a little, it's a little surprising, you know? The one time I was invited out to the house, though... <laughs> Oh, yeah, well, that yeah. sure, heck, sure. Labor Day weekend, wasn't it? Well, I think it yeah, was. Yeah, I think yeah. it was. Yeah. Uh, but you know what I'm saying? It's just like, uh, you, whenever we would see you, there wasn't a minute where we thought, geez, here's Marv. Here's our old buddy Marv. Great, it's great to see Marv here. And now, all of a sudden, everything's just kind of oh, like that. And, right. and we're, through the whole thing, we're pulling. We want Marv to be the same great guy. We always thought he was, you know? So this is, I mean, this is more your problem, I guess, than mine now. Um, are, are you, now you're doing a lot of shows now. Is this, is this working out? Uh, I feel that... Uh, up until I, tonight, I guess. Uh, exactly. Uh, <laughs> actually, moments ago, matter of fact, I thought... Yeah. Uh, I, I, I just felt I had to tell the truth. Yeah. And uh, if I waited longer, as some people had suggested, I think a lot of the facts would have been blurred. Uh, I think that uh, I probably would have... Uh, done maybe just two shows, uh, and I felt loyalty because well, you had asked me to do the show, it. and, and I also feel that uh, people at NBC over the years, uh, even though I was fired uh, by NBC, uh, I, I think they stood with me right through the NBA Finals, and I understand the sensitivities that they went through, uh, but I, you know, I love a lot of people over there, and I, I just felt that I had to do that. You've been over the today there for show. 25 years, something like right. that? Right. So yeah. I'm doing the, the Today Show. I felt it would have been wrong mm -hmm. not to do right. uh, that show, but I felt... Are you dying to uh, get uh, back to work uh, now? Otherwise, um, you know, you can't win on this either because people would say, hey, he's afraid to talk. Right. I mean, I have to get the truth out. So, uh, and also from a psychological point of view, I, I really want to do it, and that's it. I'm not going to do any more shows after... Uh, tomorrow, and yeah. that's it. Uh, I, I think I have to put some space in terms of getting uh, back, you know, back to what, work. What do you I, want to do? Like a, a it's six months from waters. Now? And, right, but what, what do, you, do you have any kind of unofficial schedule? Like, I, I probably you don't want to, I'm going to be working the Super Bowl, probably. Probably not that soon. Well, I, I think there are certain uh, facets of my life that I have to uh, be able to uh, reconstruct, and then I think, I mean, there have been countless offers. I mean, some are what, kind what, of I, things? what I consider at the start were, were train wreck type offers where people are looking to <laughs> exploit. Hey, Mark, come on out, do the morning show <laughs> for the next year. And, <laughs> you know, in some major the morning cities. zoo. Right, yeah. exactly. <laughs> uh, so I'm not, uh, you know, not looking uh, in that direction. But uh, I, I think I, I you know, have to consider what's out there and uh, eventually, as I said, put some time. Would you go back that, to NBC? Is that a possibility? Both uh, Madison Square Garden Network, and they've been wonderful with me. Right. They've really talked to me uh, on a regular basis. I have a lot of friends over there, and uh, people like Dave Checkets and Joe Cohn, executives over there. Just on a, every other day, uh, you know, I talk to these people. Uh, NBC said uh, the door, you know, could be open. Uh, there are other possibilities. So I want to kind of want to get away for what a while. What about CBS? Could you come here? I mean, we got no sports, but you could come here anyway. <laughs> <laughs> we got nothing for you to do. <laughs> the Masters, yeah. once a year. Right. Go down to Augusta work the Masters. Right. Uh, I can hang around here and do some errands around the, uh, you know. The, is, there, is there any way that you will outlive this, do you think? I certainly, I certainly hope so. I, I, I look forward to uh, sitting down here a year from now, or uh, I know things will be okay when I'm back, uh, say, playing bloopers, you know, yeah. on, on, yeah. on the show. And I... You know, I want to put it uh, behind me. Uh, gone through uh, 
counseling, which is something I uh, never believed in in the past, but I, I find it very helpful. At, but it's at really, any time prior it's not, to it's not, it's not, it's really uh, something also just helping me get, get through the whole yeah. ordeal of it. I mean, just going through this whole situation. At, at any time prior to this, did you say to yourself or feel maybe counseling would have been beneficial? Or is it no, only I, since? I, I, you I, thought everything was more or less okay until this episode, right? Yeah, I probably could have used uh, some, some counseling. Uh, you know, it's, it's a tough question to answer because I talk to people now and they, I didn't realize that they actually are in counseling and it's not something, you know, we, I know, joke about it. We used to in the past, sure. but it's very, very helpful uh, in just uh, introspectively. I don't think I looked at myself and my family uh, the same way I do uh, right now, but, um, you know, just because someone goes through uh, like I, I refer to this curious stage, doesn't make you a bad person. There are a lot of people out there that can relate mm -hmm. to this. I was always very shy. I was always uh, not the type of guy that hung around bars or went out, you know, trying to yeah. pick up women or anything like that. I mean, you know what? When I'm I curious, think, I, I think there's a wrong tag that has been put on all this. When I get curious, I turn on the Discovery Channel, I and I think that. maybe you should do the same thing, yeah. Mark. Can I touch your hair? Would you mind if I touched your hair? No problem. You sure I can touch you, your hair? Why did I think you were going to get to that? You know, <laughs> I, I, I did want to relate a story that I've never So Do we have time? It seems like we have much more time than we usually do. <laughs> I, 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 I don't quite understand that. I was, hoping, I was hoping for a nice quick segment at the end. Sorry, oh, sure. Mom, we're out of time. You'd like to be at dinner now, wouldn't right, you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, when I was very, very young, I've never told you this, mm -hmm. uh, God came to me and said, I'm going to give you a choice. We're going to either give you a voice that is very exciting for calling sports events or good hair. <laughs> I said, I'll take good hair. <laughs> That's my story. You said the good hair. But you, you, under, you understand that this is kind of uh, cathartic for, for us, for me as well, because we don't want you to be in trouble. We don't want you to be hurting or causing trouble for anyone else, you know. Uh, the, this well, woman, I don't feel your like family, your friend, I, I know, but, but us on this side, yeah. we're just kind of, you know, waiting for the boat to dock so we can uh, go on board looking for rats. I don't know what that means, by the way. <laughs> I have no idea what that means. And that is something to live by, Dave. <laughs> I, uh, but uh, I, I don't feel I caused any trouble. Mm -hmm. I, I was set up. And, that, and that's all it was, and I, I could not show it in court. And, uh, and, and any charges can be made. Isn't it interesting that it's usually celebrities who are charged or, or people who uh, ostensibly have some, yeah. you know, finances where, uh, you know, that's the, the end result. Isn't See, that that's usually... what drives me nuts because I don't know. I didn't believe. I didn't think. I don't want to believe. Nobody does that in court. Anybody can just come in and start spinning yarns about anybody else, and there's nothing that person can do well, there about are it. There different interpretations. Different states have different type uh, rules, and this was very unusual. Uh, and I think attorneys who were on on a regular basis on uh, some of the shows on CNN or court, I became a very big fan of Court TV yeah. over these days. Uh, so you're but, a regular there for a while, oh, weren't yeah, you? Yeah, I was. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I have not been offered my own show there. It should be <laughs> pointed out, but. Uh, I, I think the attorneys who were following the case, for the most part, understood what was going on, and they were, uh, they were astonished. They were outraged. There will be others, and, and on all these shows, you always have pro and con to make it interesting. Right. And uh, uh, the feminist attorneys would go on. And this, this always, uh, I, I can never understand, they'd always take the woman's point right. of view. They would assume that the, the woman was wrong. Now, why is that? You know, why, why is that so? Uh, it, I mean, other things can happen. And, and in this case, there was a history, uh, you know, out there. I didn't think we'd get that serious about this. Thing. Well, You're, I mean, know. because, you know, on our side, all we know is, oh, my God, this woman says that she's been physically abused. And, and you, you have to take that very, well, very no, I, seriously. I don't, I don't mean from that point yeah. of view, but yeah. I, I'm, I'm saying, if, you know, her, a lot of stuff came out about her, but it, it could not be presented in Panties, court. Marv? I just had to ask you. Panties? No panties? No, no panties? See, it's stuff like that. What, what, what happens is that anything that's said, anything that is said, gets out there and yeah. it's printed. Yeah. So, I mean, that's very, uh, you know, it's a very unfair aspect. Marv, I'm going to guess that of all the shows you have done, this was probably the most difficult to, to consider doing. And it means a lot to me that you came over here under these circumstances, especially under these circumstances. And, and let me rough you up a little bit. 
I'm still your friend. Oh, I'll always sure. be your friend. And and we 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 want to have you back under you know better times, better circumstances. I look forward, look forward to that. Good luck to you with everything. Thank you, Dave. Always Our a pleasure.